Last week when I started doing some research into whirly gigs, I discovered that there are millions of different kinds of whirly gigs. There's guys who just specialize in nothing but whirly gigs. There's books you can get on how to make whirly gigs. And it's really cool because some of them are just so intricate and complex and really fun to look at. And I'm sure that would be a lot of fun to explore more. If you would like to try this one out, check in the description box and I've included a PDF cut list. So you could just uh, print it out, paste it on your wood and just uh, cut it out. And think of that PDF as a starting point uh, because really the fun of these is letting your imagination run wild and coming up with all sorts of creative ideas. One of the things I really wanted to do with this project was I was going to do it as a zombie apocalypse theme for the impending zombie apocalypse. And I, I thought the guy would be chopping with the axe, but, you know, you could have like a zombie's head just being <laughs> coming off. But, alas, it just seemed a little bit too challenging for my first whirly gig. So I went with the guy chopping wood. <laughs> I've got a half inch strip of plywood that I'm going to cut a groove in, an eighth inch groove, using an eighth inch bit on my router. And for the cap piece, I'm going to take another piece of that half inch plywood and cut a half inch groove in it all the way along the length. Cutting some notches at 45 degree angles that'll hold these fan blades. And I'm just drilling an eighth inch hole for the center rod. And I'm making a second offset hole. And while I'm at it, I'll drill holes for the guy's legs and his body where they're gonna hinge together. So what I need to do is take this uh, eighth inch steel rod and I will run it through that center hole. And what I want to do is bend it to where it goes over and then back down into that hole. I think if I just make some right angles that should work. Well I can tell you this eighth inch steel wire is a lot harder to bend <laughs> than I thought. So let's see here. It should, see how close I am. <laughs> well, I'm off about a sixteenth of an inch or so. <laughs> well, I'll see if I can just mush it down in there somehow. Well, I got it sticking in there. That's uh, not exactly the way I wanted it to be. I didn't like, I don't like this sticking up like that. I don't know. I may fuss with that a little bit more. Anyways, I'm gonna drop it into this channel now and just make sure it spins okay. Yeah, it seems to and put this little cap on. Now what I need to do is make that same kind of bend in that rod over here so I can it'll create the little turning part. Well I've moved this over to my vise which seems to be the better way to do it and now I can kind of get this bent a little bit easier. Well, I finally got it and it just took a lot of, you know, messing around with it and bending and rebending and just kind of fooling around with it until I got a nice spin on it. But as it is now, it works out pretty well. I wanted to show you the man. Uh, what I did with him is I just ran a real thin bolt. It's an eighth inch thick bolt all the way through. Uh, and I put some washers in here and over here. And then I just hooked it together with a lock nut that, uh, is not real tight, just so it can pivot properly. Okay, 
Okay, I've got everything painted and ready to assemble, and what I've done is on the fan part, I've just uh, put in a couple of washers here to just to help it spin a little bit better. So what I need to do is I will just drop this into that groove, and then I can glue the cap on, making sure I only get glue along the sides. I don't want glue to drop down in there, obviously. I don't know if it's really going to help that much, but it can't hurt to put a little bit of grease on <laughs> the axle. Okay, now I can glue my little man on, and I've just put some glue on his feet. I didn't paint the insides of those. And uh, just kind of put them down here wherever I think he looks best. I thought it would be fun to give the guy a real log to be chopping on, so I cut off an old dead branch that was on this bush here. <laughs> I'm just going to epoxy down sections of this. Right, what I've got here is some 16 gauge wire. It's pretty thick, and so now I just need to run it through here, and I'm just going to make a loop and wrap it around itself. Of factors going on here and if you download the PDF and use this uh, you may want to slide the man back a little bit you may want to change the size of this notch move it forward you know as it is now I probably could have set this hole in his arms further back toward his elbow and then it would have been more straight up and down but I mean it works this way I don't know, it's just something you'll just have to kind of fool around with. And what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to find the balancing point. I browsed around the hardware store and found these nylon tubes, these little sleeves. And I'm going to drill a hole in that pivot point and stick this in. So that'll go in just like that. All right, I've also taken a redwood board and I've stuck a nail in the top of it as a post. <laughs> <laughs> 